Hi there, and in this video, we're going to be going over how I got my client here at Ash's social media accounts from zero to 14,000 followers in three months, and we amassed over 5 million views together. And at the end of these three months, Ash had established himself as a thought leader in his space, and we achieved $40,000 worth of revenue coming directly into his pipeline with one video. He did not need to memorize scripts, do any preparation, or do any video editing whatsoever. And the video editing that was done on my side was incredibly minimal. And that was one of the key factors that played into the success of this campaign. Before working with Brunson, we weren't posting any content online. And after working with him for three months, we put out a post asking something from our clients and we made a $40,000 in that week from that one post. I just want to add to this and that one of the key factors into playing into the success of this campaign was this. 48,000 people coming through his accounts, checking it out. Now in the B2B space, you don't actually need this high level of traffic coming into your social media accounts, but if you got it, why not use it? And when you have this amount of traffic coming through, it's honestly, it's just a sheer numbers game. You can just put out an offer and a certain percentage of those people will want to buy. But again, in the B2B space, you do not need this, but if you got it, use it. So here we are, this is starting point A, and this is what I was contracted in to help Ash do. That was to establish Ash as an industry thought leader in his space with organic social media. Gary V is doing it, or Mosey's doing it, Grant Cardone is doing it, and we wanted to do something similar with Ash. First step that I recommend everyone do as a starting place is to figure out what is happening in your market. If you don't know, you should know. Now I figured this out with Google Trends. I did a lot of high level overview into what is happening in the market. I then went deeper into Ask the Public to figure out what are the exact things that people are searching for in Google. The third thing was vidIQ and vidIQ allows you to figure out what people are searching for in YouTube. And from all of this information, you can start to understand the mindset of your key ideal audience. The fourth thing was competitor research. And honestly, what this is, is going into all of your competitors' videos, reading the comments, seeing what they're asking, seeing what they're asking and the creators are not answering, seeing what else they need to know, finding out everything so you can understand where the gaps in the market are and how you can add value to the conversation with a unique perspective. Now, one of the key factors here that I figured out, which led to a problem, which led to a solution, which impacted the success of this campaign was hooks. We all know what they are. Here are three reasons why you should do this. Here is an unexpected mindset shift that I made to help me achieve that. We've heard them all thousands of times before. And I thought back in my mind, I was like, all right, everyone else is doing hooks like this. We need to do hooks exactly like that for Ash. And that was part of the problem. So this problem is in the fact that hooks have a plus side and a minus side. The plus side is if you're able to nail it, you can of course hook and maintain people's attention much easier. The downside is, is that they can feel quite unnatural. They can be hard to say, and audiences are becoming more sophisticated. We have heard these hooks many times before, and I'm sure you have as well. When you're scrolling through your social media feed, you hear them and now you're like, oh, I've heard that before and I scroll on past. The market, us, the audience who is watching content online, we are getting smarter, we are sophisticating. And so that means that us as marketers, we need to go one step further into the conversation, go further than deeper than the normal stock standard hooks that people have. Now, practically, how this impact filming what happened was when I jumped into filming and we had these pre-decided hooks, it, was, it felt quite unnatural. Some people are able to just say these hooks and allow it to just flow right, right into a conversation. Others, it just feels weird and it doesn't feel right. And it was causing friction. Videos were not performing as well as they could have. Ash was not enjoying filming as much as he wanted to. And so I needed to figure out a way in which we can create impactful content without using these stock standard hooks. And that is when I found this key observation. You can see here that I've got examples from Joe Rogan, Chris Williamson, Tim Ferriss, Alex and Leila Hormozzi. When they do long form video podcasts, they're not actually thinking about or memorizing what is the hook that I should say to hook and maintain someone's attention, right? They're just having a normal, everyday, engaging conversation that's interesting to them and their ideal audience. So I started to think about how can I recreate this environment into a filming session and that's exactly what I did. So the practical takeaway and how I applied that into a filming session was re recreating the in-depth interview. 
I figured out exactly what my clients needed to say to build an audience and get that flow of leads of people coming directly to them. Then I reverse engineered all of those topics and I wrote questions that would help elicit that exact answer. Then I reconstructed all of those questions and I put them into a conversation. And then I made little additions in between to make it flow quite naturally so that you, from a client's point of view, you're just having a conversation. But the output of that conversation is highly engaging videos. And this is the result. We had some content go up. 4.5 million views, 293,000 views. Just content started to tick time and time again. It just kept on growing and growing and growing. More people were entering his DMs. More people were commenting on him. People were starting to recognize him public. The game was on. Now, two of the benefits of this style of content was one, it just felt completely transparent, completely natural. It was just having a conversation with your audience and engaging with them as equals. It's a difference as it's not up here and you're telling people what to do because we are just sick of being told what to do at this point in social media. It is speaking to people as humans and we relate to that. And the second thing was storytelling. We all understand the importance of storytelling and the questions that I designed to ask Ash were about his own personal experiences. And when he reflected back on his own personal experiences, he was actually helping his audience because he himself was where they were two years ago. And he was just thinking back and helping them get to where he currently is today. And that was storytelling. He just told stories and it was engaging and it was exciting. And that is also what helped him build this connection with his audience was that he was speaking from his experiences. Now we had built up an audience of people who know, liked and trusted Ash. It was now time to turn them from viewers into clients in an ethical way. And honestly, it was as simple as making an offer. So we had done all the groundwork. We had solved problems one, two, and three for his audience. And now they were trying to solve problems four and five. And that's when Ash presented his opportunity to help people get from three to four to five to achieve their final future state. And that is when he got $40,000 worth of revenue of people coming directly into his pipeline. So here are my key findings. Take these away and apply them into your own content. The first one is that classic hooks are dying. You can share your value with the world and you don't have to waste time memorizing scripts. We've all heard them before. As soon as we hear them, we scroll on past. We can now just be ourselves and talk directly to other people online. The second thing is transparency. Be honest. We are sick of all of these fake gurus. And how this applied with Ash is he was incredibly transparent, mad respect to Ash because he gave everyone every piece of information that he knew to get them from where they are, to get them to where they currently want to be. And that is in terms of like, you know, tactics, strategies, you know, workflows, and even like financial information. We just gave it all away. The third thing is that fancy video editing is not required anymore. You do not need all of this over the top video editing to connect with your audience. You can just be competent and solve other people's problems. The fourth one is speak to your audience's everyday realities. So instead of saying, here are three different reasons why you should do this, that's not enough anymore. What is good is if you can speak and if you can describe your ideal client's current day realities in more detail than they are able to vocalize. And when you are able to do that, people will see you and they will be like, hey, this person knows me. They know exactly what I'm going through. They have been where I am before and they are now in a different space. So if I speak with those people and if I engage with them and if they help me, they can get me from where I am to get me to where I want to be. It's a subtle change from pain points into talking about everyday realities. I hope that you take these and apply them into your own content. And if you are an entrepreneur or a consultant who wants to get started with video based content, there is a button below this video that you can click to book in a call with me and we'll figure out where you currently are, where you want to be, and we will unblock all of those roadblocks that are stopping you from getting you to where you want to be in six weeks. I look forward to speaking with you. All the best. Peace.